Whether it's in the car, the shopping mall or at home, music constantly surrounds us. But what you might not realise is that passively listening to music and actively participating in music are two very different things. It has been found that music can affect how we study, improve intelligence and correct learning disorders, as Crystal Ip reports. We know very little really about how it is that, that you learn. Dr. Michael Jacobson is from the University of Sydney's education faculty. There had been some research in the 90s about the so-called Mozart effect. The, the Mozart effect though uh, shows a, a small uh, gain for doing certain kinds of tasks within about 15 minutes after listening to the Mozart piece. Um, but then it seems to fade and it, it doesn't seem to apply to all people and it doesn't necessarily have to be Mozart's music. Dr. Jacobson is referring to a recent finding by New York Academy of Science it's found that listening to any enjoyable music while studying can help you to learn, not just Mozart, as previously thought. Some other work was suggesting that we tend to listen to music with different parts of the brain. And so most people typically listen with the right side of the brain. It's more kind of emotional, intuitive side if you buy this kind of simplistic view of things. Um, However, musicians, when they listen to music, typically listen with the analytical side, and so you'll see more activation in, in the left hemisphere. Uh, and so for me, I cannot study or do any work at all with any music, period. I just need silence. While Jacobson is a keen clarinet player, George Ellis is the conductor of Australian Youth Choir, and tonight they're rehearsing for Mozart Avi Verum Corberts in Leichhardt's also Aquacan Church. He says that participating and learning music can affect your intelligence in a positive way, rather than just listening to it. Certainly for younger children who learn music, especially learning a musical instrument, um, they have to count. You know? So a four-year-old, for example, who goes to the piano or picks up a violin and is reading music, um, has to know that there are four beats in this bar or three beats in this bar or two beats in that bar and that counts. So that has to help with maths. You have to be good at mathematics to understand music or music and rhythm. Maths and music are quite uh, related and Pythagoras for example um, uh, we use a, a lot of his work to understand harmonics in music. So do the choristers from the Australian Youth Choir think singing helped them at school? It helps me concentrate a lot more when I come here on Friday night. It kind of helps me focus a bit at school more, because otherwise I like lose track of things. Before I started singing, yeah, I, I didn't really concentrate as much. I was a lot younger, but I just find that helps me concentrate. Dr. Francois Nicholas is a psychologist and a developer of Tomatis Method. She takes the ability of music to aid learning to the next level. With her work with people suffering from learning disorders, she uses Mozart music to retrain the ear. The good thing with Mozart, it's really universal music and we have the same results if we are in Tahiti, in, in China or in Sweden. In her therapy rooms, there are many colorful couches and the shelves are full of board games like Connect 4 and Monopoly. This is where she treats adults and children who may suffer from speech delay, learning difficulties, dyslexia, weak vocabulary, concentration difficulties, and she explained her most recent case. We have a, a, a little boy who just finished, completed his um, first 10 days program yesterday. He's got an autistic older brother. He's Asperger's and this is a child who was very 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 depressed within 10 days he's smiling he's laughing he's happy to get up in the morning and mom said that last weekend was the first ever weekend to feel like a normal family. Tomatis method um, is a sound therapy meaning that it's using the music to help people to uh, retrain their ears. Dr. Tomatis was a French ENT he described the ear as in terms of listening, listening meaning it's different from hearing. Hearing is just being bombarded by sounds and, and just receive them. Whereas uh, listening is more an active act in terms of you 
receive those sounds, but you, are you going to listen to them? Are you going to process them or not? And is your, the connection between the ear, the brain and the body are really effective? And sometimes they are not. And that's where the Tomatis Method can start to play a role there. The Tomatis Method uses a machine decided by Dr. Tomatis called the Electronic Ear. Mozart music is played through headphones at certain frequencies that helps to retrain the listener's own ears. We use the music of Mozart because it's um, the one where we have the most effective results with the electronic ear, the one which is also giving us the most um, unpredictable. The rhythm in the music of Mozart is pretty un unpredictable. It sounds like if you use Vivaldi, it's more predictable. Because we are retraining, we want the ear to be functioning at any stage. Do people hear Mozart through the Tomatis headphones the same as they were hearing it through the normal speaker? Not really, because we also filter out some frequency sounds. We enforce some of the frequency range as well. It's been fine that listening to any music, not just Mozart, can help people to learn while they study. Can you see people in the future listening to the Pussycat Dolls or Bob Dylan through the electronic ear? Um, not really at this stage, but why not? Why not? Tristo Yip, Sydney News.